At CrossFit Lincoln, our passion is positively impacting and changing lives by creating a strong, brave, healthy community through education. We talk about nutrition, fitness, mindset, and more. From the Roro Flick studio, it's Aaron Perkypile, Phil Kniep, and Paul Kanarski. Episode one. Season one, episode one. Oh, there we go. Cycle one. Yeah, it's cycle one. That's really probably a better better way to That's look at it. That's what we do. Cycle phase one, one cycle. phase two, phase three. Yes, yes. Phase one, cycle one, episode one, day one. Day one, week one. <laughs> and we're off. We'll I'm see. excited to start this podcast. Um, over the last probably six months, we've kind of developed our passion statement and what we hope to accomplish as a gym at CrossFit Lincoln. And really, I think that goes beyond the walls of our gym. Uh, and th- I think that stands out when we talk about building a strong, brave, healthy community through education. And really, the purpose of our podcast is about educating each other, continuing to learn e- uh, ourselves, and then being able to share the things that we've learned or the things that other people have learned, eventually, hopefully having some guests on to talk about their expertise and things that would be valuable that we think would be valuable to our, our listeners. I'm just going to go around and uh, we'll introduce ourselves and just kind of give me a 30 second where are you from? How'd you end up at CrossFit Lincoln full time? Paul, why don't we start with you? All right. My name is Paul Konarski. I have been working at CrossFit Lincoln for about two years now. Before that, I had been working out at CrossFit Lincoln for six years, I believe. I think I started in 2011 was when I got started. I've been working out on my own here and there for a little while. And my brother actually had come across the CrossFit Lincoln, or not CrossFit Lincoln, but just the CrossFit.com website told me about it. I looked at the website. I had no idea what was going on. I could not figure out. I saw one of the workout of the days made no sense to me. I didn't, I did not understand it. So anyway, so um, your brother got you into it. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. (laughs) Um, roundaboutly. Yeah. (laughs) So that happened. I worked out there for a few years. I really enjoyed it. Um, one thing led to another and I was able to start coaching part-time at first and then full-time and now, well, this is what I'm doing full-time and podcasting, podcasting, <laughs> it led to podcasting. So but, Paul left out that his original job at the gym was cleaning the bathrooms and you did that for a long time. Yes. Just like dedicated yourself to that for a while in exchange for membership. I went from part-time janitor to, I'm actually now head janitor. yeah i did start i started with bathroom cleaning coaching part-time coaching full-time and still head janitor of course so that's basically been my path along the way i uh just generally speaking i'm always curious i guess i'm always curious about different things especially movement related and fitness and health related um so this is for me it's kind of a dream position to be in as far as being able to learn things and then now the goal with this podcast i believe is to try to pass that along to the people. So I have a nice lot of marriage. questions about uh, where Paul goes to find the things that he finds. <laughs> uh, anything about breathing or about movement patterns, I'm excited to learn about that because I'm always curious about Paul being curious. Yeah, someday we want to know where you find all the things that you find. <laughs> Maybe he won't share those secrets. Ironically, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll go, I'll go next. Um, I'm Aaron Perkypile. I have a varied background graduated a long time ago with an accounting degree and worked in accounting, worked in nonprofit, worked in just a lot of different things. And most recently was teaching, but I got to, I was teaching accounting, um, but I got the opportunity to come on and kind of work with CrossFit Lincoln um, from a business side and then started coaching about a year and a half ago. And just, I'm pumped about what the gym is, is doing and kind of just being, um, having the opportunity to impact people's lives and see their, their health change and see their mindset change and see their confidence grow and rise and be able to do it with, with this crew and the, and the coaching crew that we have. It's pretty exciting. How about you, Phil? How'd you end up here? My background's mostly in sports. Uh, I played football in college and I like the competitive side of sports. Um, when I got done with school, I was kind of looking for that competitive edge or whatever. And um, some guys that I worked with were doing CrossFit. So um, at first I wasn't very good at it and I did it in secret. And I was hoping that I could beat them in secret. (laughs) 
And then over time, I started becoming competitive with myself, and that's what drew me to CrossFit in the first place. Um, and when I moved, I lived in Colorado when that was going on. Then when I moved to Lincoln, I decided that it would be awesome to own a CrossFit gym. So um, with some of the guys on the fire department, we kind of worked together and got the place off the ground. And here we are 10 years later. So Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. What keeps you coming back to CrossFit, right? So there's a lot of, there's always been a lot of fad exercise movements and things like that. Um, big fan of the shake weight personally, <laughs> but uh, what, what keeps coming, keeps you coming back to the methodology of CrossFit? How is that something that hasn't, out, you know, outlived its, its lifespan or something like that? There's always something you can improve on and that keeps it new and exciting. Um, so even if you're not feeling like, like one thing that initially got me into it was the kind of the pain and feeling that pain. Um, but even if you're like, Hey, I'm kind of tired of feeling that pain and I want to take a break. You can like improve your Olympic weightlifting or your strength or practice your gymnastics. There's always something new and that keeps me coming back every day. Cool. How about you, Paul? Yeah. An aspect I think that personally, and for a lot of other people, I think pulls you back over time is the people you're doing it with and the fact that life is not lived alone. It's just all there is to it. And if you um, have something like cross that you can do with other people and push each other, push yourself as a result of somebody else doing it right next to you, I think that is a very powerful piece of it. It's not the only part of it that pulls you back, but that's a very powerful piece of it for most people. Sure. Uh, I know CrossFit often, if you listen to games athletes all the way down to the, the average CrossFitter that's just in the gym every single day, or even just a couple days a week, they talk about the community of CrossFit yeah. and how how much they love. You know, I think we had a, a member recently who posted a review that said, you know, I started because of the community. I keep coming back because of the community, uh, the people yeah. that they consistently see. There's some accountability and just it's fun. It's weird to say, but it's kind of fun to suffer with people. And uh, it's, well, it's more fun than suffering alone. <laughs> <laughs> it is more fun than suffering, and, and it's more fun to suffer with people who have fun suffering. Yeah, uh, it sounds kind of yeah. twisted, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, that's definitely the case. And lately, for me, I've been having a hard time working out. And I think Paul, in one of our meetings the other day, one of his issues was when is Phil going to start working out again, <laughs> 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 and having that accountability and. Um, somebody to kind of keep driving you, like helped it lit a fire underneath me. So just, right. I don't always get to do class. I work out alone a lot. Um, but having that accountability of people in the gym, um, definitely helped me keep going. Cause I was at a point where I was like, oh, I just don't care. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't you talk about, um, what's it like to be a coach at the gym versus maybe, you know, you and I both started as members and that was it. We just got to come in for that hour, two hours a day and, and experience class. And Phil, you've had a little bit different role because from the beginning you've been in that coaching role. Um, talk a little bit about maybe what that feels like, you know, being, uh, is there is there a difference in how you approach your fitness as a coach versus how you approach, approached your fitness as a member? Um, can you, do you, do you think you approach it any differently? That is a good question. Um, I will say I know that I th I think I probably learn more from the members than I than they probably learn from me, to be honest, because I get to spend, you know, a couple hours a day watching people perform and attempt things. And I get to see a lot of variety in how people are doing stuff. So that's not exactly answering your question, but there is a lot of benefit for me personally, being able to see a lot of people do things a lot of slightly different ways. And... Um, I learn a lot from that. And then I, I think that has helped me perform better because I spent a couple hours a day studying this thing. Yeah. And you kind of see what did or didn't work. <clears throat> yeah. Right? Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. And then when you do finally get to do the workout of the day, you have all this data that you get to sort through. Exactly. There's an advantage at yep. least from a, approaching a specific singular workout, maybe. Correct. Much, yeah. much better. Like if there's a particular workout you need to pace instead of go full blast right from the get go, I can see if a couple people do it both ways and go, okay, I'm going to try this way <laughs> instead of that way. <laughs> both ways are good, but you know, kind of depends on your personality. Sure. Yeah. How about you, Phil? Um, what makes it difficult to maybe step into a class 
Um, is it difficult because of the other duties that you have in the gym? Is it difficult because of, you know, t- talk to us a little bit about that. Sometimes it is a little bit difficult because there are times where you're like, I just want to walk in the gym and I want to be a member and I don't have, I don't want to have the responsibilities of answering questions or um, picking stuff up or whatever. So um, a lot of times um, I kind of just try to put my blinders on and join in the class and just kind of have fun and and chill out because um, I do enjoy coming to classes and, and hanging out there and being a part of the community and just like being a member every once in a while. So I just try to get in there and know that I'm not going to go there to do work. I'm going to go there to enjoy the community and have fun and work out. Yeah, I, I kind of uh, liken it to if I worked at an indoor trampoline park, it would be really hard for me to jump on trampolines. Paul, maybe not. Paul loves a trampoline. <laughs> but, <laughs> I do. But, it would make it would make it hard for me because I know what it takes to maintain those trampolines and keep them clean and make sure that they're safe and all those things and it feels like I'm at work and I should be yeah. working. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I think it is hard as a coach to prioritize our own fitness or in a in a community setting we might squeak in a workout here or there on our own. Um, but you know I would encourage our listeners, hey, if you are a CrossFit coach, go attend one of your classes if you have that opportunity. If you have multiple coaches in your community. Try to attend as a as a member. Yeah, um, definitely. And I know our members really appreciate <clears throat> seeing coaches in classes, and we appre- we appreciate attending classes as members and getting to interact with members in a different capacity. Um, I think it's you know when I coached basketball, men's basketball, every once in a while I would w- do a workout with our players because I wanted them to know, hey, I'm not going to ask you to do anything that I wouldn't also put myself through. Right. And I think that's important from a CrossFit coach perspective to show, hey, look, I'm in, I'm doing the exact same workout that you're doing, right, at my capacity, and I'm going to scale when I need to as well. So, Yeah, that's definitely true. And as a coach, being in another coach's class, there's a lot of things that you learn from that coach um, because your perspective on coaching is always different than someone else's perspective on coaching. So you'll pick up cues and ideas <clears throat> and things like that to help you improve as a coach as well. Like, hey, I really liked how I heard how Paul approached this person on like giving corrective feedback on a movement. I'm gonna use that, you know? So taking those classes gives you a whole different perspective and kind of allows you to test the product that is being put on the floor. So um, yeah, if, if you're listening and you're a CrossFit coach or owner, I would suggest taking classes as much as you can just so you can get that perspective. Definitely. Sure. And, <clears throat> I mean, I think the one of the big benefits of exercise in general is it gives you a chance to clear your mind and kind of separate. Sometimes it's difficult as, as a CrossFit coach at your gym to separate the work from going and doing a class. But if you can do that... Um, do it. And that's what everybody needs, I think, is a chance to exert themselves on a daily basis, clear the mind. I think that's why a lot of people like coming in, you know, after work, or for example, you have the stress build up from the day, you come in, you clear your mind, you have a chance to not really think about much. And um, you feel a lot better as a result. Same thing for us, if we can sure. get ourselves to detach from work for a moment and do that, we're gonna have a better life. Talk about the importance of consistency. Whether you're mm-hmm. new to CrossFit, or you're an experienced CrossFitter, or you're new to nutrition, or you've, you know, you've been through all of the, the different diet fads and all these things, what's the importance of consistency? And, and how do we approach that without burning ourselves out? Well, I, I think in consistency, if you're a new CrossFitter is the most important factor, because there's so much to learn, and there's so much to do. And if you're coming in once or twice per week, um, a couple of things are happening. One, you're not getting exposure to a lot of the different things that we do in CrossFit. And two, you're going to get really sore and then you're going to recover through the week and then you're going to do it again once or twice the next week and you're going to get really sore. So your body never adapts or adjusts to um, kind of the rigors of the higher intensity type workouts that we do. So I think it's highly important. And even if the intensity isn't there yet, the consistency... Um, is going to help with that recovery and consistency is going to help you learn the movements because you're getting practice with it more often. And the more often you practice, uh, the more efficient you're going to get at those movements. What do you think, Paul? I I completely agree. I think building the habit is 
probably the most important piece of it. And well, okay. So then this next piece, like if you can, if you can get yourself to show up every day and not kill yourself every day, that would be the way to do it. So, you know, if you show up day one and you kill yourself, you're going to be pretty sore. You're going to have a rough time coming back day two. But um, if you can get yourself to come in and go through the workout four or five days a week, build that habit, and maybe you don't go as hard or as heavy as you think you could, you're going to be a lot better off in the long run. One, because you're building the habit. And two, um, well, that's basically it, I guess. Um, each following workout is going to help you recover from the previous one because it gets you moving, gets your blood flow and your lymph flowing and things like that. But like we're talking about with the community, that community is wonderful because it helps you push yourself. The double-edged sword of it is sometimes <laughs> it's tough not to push yourself when you're feeling beat up. So it's easy to say, hey, just come in every day. Don't don't push it too hard if you're not if you're not feeling like it, if you're feeling too beat up. But that can be more difficult. Yeah, so if I'm, if I'm a person who I've tried a lot of different fitness things. Maybe I've tried P90X. I've gone to a local, a local gym and I'm, you know, one of those anytime or 24 hour places. And I've tried to work out and I get, I'm really gung ho about something for about two weeks. Right. And maybe I go really consistently for two weeks and then I burn out or I don't know what to do. Like how, how is CrossFit going to be different? How is it going to, you know, how am I going to be able to stay a little more consistent with that? What's going to keep com- keep me coming back? That is a good question. That's the magic rule. <laughs> you can go to other um, gyms that have equipment, but they don't have the people working out next to you. True. That's that's the magic. And for me, the only thing that I can compare it to is the go to the Y or Globo Gym and lift and run and do the same thing over and over week after week. And for me, that that's boring. So... I don't know what those other, I've never done P90X. I've never done like any classes at the Y or anything. So I don't know how those are structured, but if they're same, the same week to week, like I think just boredom sometimes is what causes you to get out of that habit. Cause it's like, well, I want to do something new. I did this all last week. I don't want to do it again this week. And I think, I feel like CrossFit is varied enough that you may be doing some of the same movements, but you're, doing them in different varieties. You're doing thrusters with pull-ups one day, but then next week maybe you're doing thrusters and 400 meter run or something like that, you know? So um, sometimes life gets boring though and you gotta kind of just push through it. (laughs) (laughs) So that's my next question then. When, When it comes to consistency, let's say that I start at CrossFit, right? And I'm coming two, three, four, five days a week. How do I avoid that turning into routine? Because when we talk about CrossFit, which is um, functional movement that is constantly varied, performed at high intensity, we really tout that constantly varied piece. But what if I'm always coming to class every single day at the exact same time? Is that enough of a change in stimulus because I'm doing different movements? Or should I also be varying up the, the times of day that I'm going to keep keep my brain fresh if possible, you know, how, when, when does uh, consistency turn into routine and how can we kind of combat the routine of even in CrossFit? That's a good question. I think life is a balance of the two, you know, you have to have some amount of routine. We're creatures of habit to thrive. You have to have some amount of routine. Maybe just the difference in the workout is enough. It's a good question. One, if you want to get results or get the results that you want, it's, better to come four to five times per week for one um, because you're getting more variety in your workouts but something that we've been trying to do is rotate the days around so if that if that is a case where you can only come monday wednesday friday or you can only come monday tuesday thursday friday or something you're getting exposure to something new like every uh, phase that we do so every four week phase it rotates the focus rotates to another day sure um and just to clarify, what you're talking about with that is each, basically each day of the week has a slightly different emphasis right. as far as the movement patterns that we're doing. A pulling or yeah. A squatting yeah, exactly. or pushing. Exactly. It's still CrossFit, so you're doing a variety of stuff every day, but there's a bit of an emphasis and that rotates from time to time. Sure. I remember, when I, I remember when I started CrossFit at, at CrossFit Lincoln, um, Wednesday was Partner Wednesday, and you always knew it was oh, Partner yeah. Wednesday, right? <laughs> and t- Thursday was like the bro sesh. You were going to bench and squat yeah. and... <laughs> Strength day. Strength, yeah, strength day. And I remember um, all of a sudden that that schedule kind of got shaken up 
and people would walk into the gym like, what? I thought today was supposed to be strength day. I don't come on the running days. And well, that's the point, right? Like we shake things up because it's supposed to be constantly varied. You're not supposed to every right. Thursday you're going to squat because what happens in life when you need to run on a Thursday to run away from that train and all you know how to do is squat. Well, are you going to squat the train or are you going to run from the train? <laughs> got yeah. to be able to constantly vary things up, right, for what life throws at you. Yeah, I mean, I think the benefit of going to different classes and trying different classes uh, would be you get a uh, taste, of, you get to meet new people, for one, and two, you kind of get to figure out how does your body react really early in the morning to something compared to at night because a lot of times when I work out in the morning, I feel weaker and yeah. I feel like I can't push as hard, but in the afternoon I feel stronger and you can kind of know that um, if you're consistently trying different time frames, um, and just understand like, oh, I'm just not getting weak. I'm working out in the morning. Sure. So right. I'm just, it's just different. It's, you just aren't as strong in the morning period. We had a member this morning, um, Brad was there and he's normally a, a midday guy, consistent, like religiously there at, the, at midday. And he walked in and I was like, are you okay? Like what's happening? <laughs> He's like, I just got a lot of, lot to do today. And he used to be a 6am guy. He used to be a 6am guy. And oh, he even right. said today is we're squatting the, these seven, the seven rep squat. He's like, I can't, I can't imagine. I can't even remember what it was like to lift when it was this early, when I used to come this early, it's crazy. And it was different. Right. And and then the Metcon with the running and, and air squats, it was different for him too. The, the stimulus feels different. So, yeah. All right. So I want to go back a little bit to Paul. You were talking about um, the routine and and coming every single day and that sort of thing. <sighs> Talk to me a little bit about as a new person, what can I do to not try to go too hard, too fast? Because we, we used to have on the door, check your ego at the door so that you didn't try to do too much weight. You didn't try to go too fast. Right. And part of that's just kind of figuring out yeah. how how we respond. But um, what's, what's my role as an athlete versus a coach's role to help limit that, um, maybe trying to do too much too fast? One, as an athlete, I'd say just double check with the coach. If you're, especially if you're in your first month or two, um, if you're not re exactly, if you're not really sure, just double check with the coach. Say, Hey, what do you think about this particular thing? Um, and the coach is probably gonna be talking to you anyway about how you're scaling, how you're approaching it, but just double check with the coach. And I would go on the lighter side of things because there's usually a range, a suggested range of weight. I would go on the lighter side of things for the first um, month or two, at least. And then same thing with the type of movements that you're doing. Work on the more simple things first. I know it's not the really cool, sexy thing to do, but it pays off in the long run quite well. Um, what if I don't believe you that it will pay off? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> do your thing, I guess. <laughs> we've had those athletes, right? You know, we we've been that athlete at some point. And the good the good news is, like, just getting going. Whether you go heavy or go light, at least you're getting going, and you're definitely going to get a payoff from that too. So, sure. You know, there's a little bit of experience you just get from trying different things. Sure. Try heavier, try lighter. Yeah, I think as a new athlete, you also need to remember that everyone started at the same spot and nobody had all the things down from day one. Yeah. And I think sometimes everyone wants to have everything right away. And it's like walk before you run, get those strict pull-ups before you start kipping, um, get some strict pull-ups before you start doing ring stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, get your squat down before you start adding a lot of load. Um, because the more efficient you can move, the stronger you're going to get faster. So if your squat is perfect doing an air squat, it's probably going to be pretty good when you do a back squat. So you might be able to get gains faster by going slower, um, than trying to do too much too fast. And then you avoid having to get really good at a movement pattern that is not how your body's meant to move. Mm -hmm. And then you got to take several steps back lighter and weight relearn something before you can progress again so yeah you're right like if you can learn to use your body the way it's meant to be used first that's going to pay off very nicely and the slower you go the less risk for injury there is so um yeah. if you get hurt then you have to take 20 steps back before mm -hmm. you can take two steps forward so yeah. going slower is is good yeah uh so now let's talk about the crossfit games um as we're sitting here, we don't know what the workout is yet. It's 10, 
17 or so and the first workouts at 10 30 i looked before we started there was no workout posted Oof. and uh they're gonna cut half the athletes after workout one what do you oh guys think goodness. it's gonna be uh, pain and suffering. <laughs> I think for sure it's going to be who wants to suffer a lot right now real quick. Well, I don't know if you saw, uh, there was some speculation that the CrossFit.com workout of the day, I think it was uh, assault bike calories and something gymnasty, gymnastics oh. and like a heavy snatch for three rounds. And they're like, that could, that could be it. Maybe they add even more weight to really, to really, cause you're, you're covering gymnastics, you're coming yeah. Olympic weightlifting and you got that kind of meta metabolic push. Uh, like maybe that's just so, something really simple. I don't know. It's, I can't the imagine it being super short, but it also, I don't think the schedule allows for it to be super long either. The rumor yeah. is it's like a 45 minute time domain and mm. it's got box jump overs in it or something. Really? I mean, I watched a video from Armin Hammer yesterday. He was on site, and they usually announce the first workout at the athlete dinner, and they didn't do that. He said he was, they were going to wait to announce it. So I don't know what it is, but we may know. How much of an right advantage? Now. How much of an advantage do you feel like there is? Are, they're going to have to sequester part of the the field, right? Because you don't want to give them that much of an advantage to watch the first two heats go before we talk unless about it's, it. It's probably got to be all together. Well, I was told there's three different know. heats. Oh. oh. I, well then, yeah, I assume you're. I mean, to... I guess. Yeah. I don't know. You just got to do your, what you got to do. Probably so got to like a parking garage or something. Yeah, but so it's kind of see what's going on. The uh, they're cut, they're cutting it down to ten athletes by the last day, and then the events after that. If you get first, it's a hundred points, and then it's a ten point difference Whoa. with each. Ooh. So if you have a last place finish, a tenth place finish, that could completely flip the field around so it's gonna be kind of exciting to Man. watch yeah what do you think what do you guys think about the i know this has been beat to death but you know what what do you feel about the the new format how they qualified athletes and and brought kind of brought it together and the way they're now going to cut that field down really quickly really early i think it's pretty cool because crossfit headquarters i feel like is giving opportunities to other people to take advantage of the crossfit stuff that's going on they're going to save money and i think it's going to be bigger overall yeah in the long run um i think the sanctional events are more games like so you're going to get those athletes that are going to get do well at the game so um i think it's i like the format i think people thought it was going to be boring having that many athletes but it's pretty exciting knowing that like half the field is going to be gone on day one so it makes it a lot more important <laughs> on how you perform on the first one i mean you don't know what the workout is matt frazier might get 76th crazy you know what i mean, I mean? he may not make it past yeah. the first cut and there's going to be a lot of those athletes that are well known that probably aren't going to make the top 75 so you're going to have a lot of new names mm. competing in the yeah. The consecutive events but yeah as far as the qualification process it fits the crossfit model in general they started with you know greg glassman started with his gym and then he let other people start their gyms using the same model but it was like okay it's your thing you run it how you want and it's kind of cool how they're doing the same thing with the sanctionals where it's saying okay this is how we did regionals before you run the event you do it how you want and people can qualify and they're even so. they're even tying those back in i think i saw it's up to like 11 sanctionals are using the worldwide open as their qualifier instead of having their own qualifier uh, and then you've got five or i think it's six or seven now that are all run by one specific company so they're all going to be kind of managed in a similar in a similar fashion yeah um and then the duvat i just saw the dubai crossfit championship uh, just announced that the winner of a specific event on saturday will automatically get a qualify for their event as a sanctional later so now you're starting really? to see them re like th give those games athletes uh, an opportunity to re-qualify automatically for that sanctional so i mean i think it's it's we saw a, a whole subset from a business perspective we saw this whole subset of of businesses and things kind of rise up with the rise of crossfit uh, apparel and uh, gear and equipment, et cetera, et cetera. Software. Yeah, exactly. And now we're going to see it 
completely shift again because now we've got different media um, media things covering the event. You got Rogue who has their own. You got yep. Morning Chalk Up who has their own sponsored by Fit Aid. You have all these different. I think I think it's going to be it's that's kind of the idea of constantly varied life, right? Yeah. CrossFit's not going to it's living kind of its mantra of constantly varying things up uh, as well. So from a probably from an athlete's perspective, if I'm a professional athlete. A little unnerving at first, trying to figure out the process. Uh, even from a fan perspective, we were comfortable with what we know, and so I get it. Mm-hmm. Like being frustrated with, like, I, you know, I'd watch some of the sanctionals and not know how how is how is someone to qualify. Like, eleven of the top twenty people have already qualified. So who does the spot go to? And you're tracking. It's hard to track. I don't know. So it, from that, it's been kind of bumpy, but I think it will smooth out. And yeah, and I think from an athlete's perspective, if you're counting on the open to qualify you for the games if you get sick in one week during the crossfit open before that would ruin your entire season you were just done and now you have a lot other ways to qualify you can do a sanctional and qualify that way um and i think what chandler smith was like 13th at the rogue invitational and he qualified for the game. So you don't even have to win the sanctional right. once it gets deeper in the season. You just got to go and do your best and you still can make it. So I like that the quote unquote cool. season is now year round. Yeah. I think that's kind of fun for, for the casual fa- uh, fan and the, the everyday athlete to be able to yeah. watch these competitions continually instead of only focusing on, you know, four to six months throughout the year. Well, uh, I want to thank Roro Flick Studios for hosting us today. We're excited about our. Episode one, phase one, cycle one, week one, day one <laughs> of, our, of our podcast. Uh, you can visit our website at CrossFitLincoln.com. You can learn more about our group classes, our nutrition coaching, and our personal training offerings. You can book a free intro there. And if you're listening on a podcast or watching on YouTube, subscribe to our podcast, like our podcast, give us some comments, r- give us that five-star rating if you found something valuable today. And we're looking forward to seeing you next time. Uh, Thanks to Phil. Thanks for Paul being here and we'll sign off for now.